Hi, ACL drivers. This is Wes Brothers, Fleet and Safety Manager with Above Care Logistics. Uh, today, I want to create a quick tutorial video on how to properly log in and operate the GeoTab ELD system that is installed in all of our vehicles. It is a requirement that all drivers log in to the GeoTab ELD system every time they're driving. So once you've got the vehicle assigned to you that you're going to be using for the day, what you want to do is you want to get yourself a tablet. There may already one be one already in the truck, or you may find one in the trans manager's office. Uh, if there is not one available or the one you have is broke, there's also the ability to log on to the ELD system using your smartphone, which I'll explain. But once you've got your assigned truck, go to your truck with your tablet, turn your tablet on. You want to locate this GeoTab icon, hit it, and then your sign-in screen will come up. Every driver should have a username and a password for GeoTab. If you don't have one, please contact, please contact me or Mike Ward, and we can get one assigned to you. So your username is going to consist of six numbers. And you hit Next. And then your password is going to consist of the very first letter of your first name, the first letter of your last name, and the same six digits that you use for your username. And the, the, the first letter of your first and last name, they're always going to be in lowercase. And you're going to log on. Now what it's doing, your EOD system now is, is hunting for what truck what trucks are near you. Now I'm in the terminal here at, at York, and so it's picked up all these trucks that are sitting in the parking lot. But I'm going to use 229982, so I'm going to select it. Now what it's doing is the ELD system is communicating with this tablet. This is all ran by data, just like your cell phone is. That's how, that's how this whole ELD system operates. So it's verifying that I'm in 229982. Now this is a straight truck, so I don't have to worry about adding any trailers, but if I'm a CDL driver and I have a trailer on, I need to attach that trailer. It's a requirement by DOT that you put that number in there. So I'd hit the plus and I would just find the trailer that you know I'm looking for. But because we don't we're not gonna worry about that, I'm in a straight truck, I'm just gonna go ahead and go back and I verify that that's my truck number. So I'm gonna hit save and continue. Now, this screen that just popped up, it shouldn't be an everyday occurrence. But what it's telling me is that when I logged out of this truck yesterday, when I was done for my day, someone else got in this truck and moved it and they did some driving. And when they got in and drove, they weren't logged into an ELD system. And so it's unassigned logs, meaning this truck didn't know where to assign all the logs that was created. They didn't know who to assign it to because the driver didn't log in. So if none of these are your unassigned logs, you don't want to accept them. You want to skip past those because you don't want you don't want to be assigned those hours of service. So hit skip. Now the next screen that will come up will be it'll ask you to inspect your truck, and it seems like that should be the next step. But here's what happens if you hit the inspect inspect button right now and do an inspection. It's having you do the inspection in an off-duty status, and that is illegal. An inspection should be done in an on-duty status. So what you want to do is hit Skip Reminder. You want to hit your HOS, and you want to put yourself on duty. And now it says you are on duty. Now you want to go to your home dashboard screen, and now it's, you verify that you're on duty. Now you want to go to your driver vehicle and inspection report. Now I've already played with this system so I'm just going to go hit inspect. These are all the categories that that you'll be checking. You don't want to check any of these boxes because if you do that's indicating that there's, there's a defect. So you go down through you want to select what kind of inspection is this. This is a pre-trip and then hit no defects and you want to verify that that is correct. So your inspection's done, go back to your dashboard, <clears throat> go to your hours of service screen. And what this tells you now is 
this tells you what you have hours wise for the rest of the day. I got eight hours until I have to take a break. I got 11 hours of driving. This should say 14 hours of workday left, which is on duty time. I've been playing around with this log here. So that's why some of the time's gone away, but it should always say 14. If it says anything other than that, then there's probably an issue with your logs. And then this is how much, how many hours you have remaining in your cycle, which is the rest of, you know, how many, how many hours you can drive or how many hours you can be on duty the rest of the week. Now you can see you're on on duty. You can actually put your trucking gear and start driving. The way this system works is that it knows that the truck is moving through different sensors that, that the system picks up through GPS and it will automatically put you in drive. And when you drive down the street, you stop and go, it'll always remain in drive. But if you stop somewhere to do a delivery and you're there for more, you're there for more than five minutes, it's automatically going to put you in an on-duty status. So you don't have to worry about switching between on duty and driving. You move the truck, you stop the truck, it's already going to determine what you're doing by the vehicle actually, you know, moving or not moving. Um, now, there are times during the day, you know, where, or there are days where you may run out of time. There could be an issue with your truck where it breaks down, um, you know, whatever the case may be. And what happens is you're going to, you're going to run out of on duty time for the day. You're going to run out of your 14 hours. So we do have some exemptions that are available to us. And one of them is the 16 hour exemption. It takes our 14 hours and it gives us an additional two hours to help us complete our day if we've ever ran into any issues. And if you determine that you're going to need those extra two hours, what you can do is you can hit view exemptions. <coughs> and down here you'll see there's an adverse driving conditions and a 16 hour. So if you need to apply for a 16 hour exemption, all you hit is apply today and it will add the additional time on to your workday left hours. If you need to use this exemption, I suggest that you give me a call so that we can discuss it to, you know, make sure we selected it at the right time. And even the adverse, um, adverse driving conditions. If we run into a lot of snowy weather, there are times where we can apply for that exemption and the same one with that as well. If you find yourself needing to use that exemption because the weather's holding you up, I need you to give me a call so we can discuss that because we want to select it at the right time. But what you want to do is go back to your dashboard. So you're on your main screen. We'll go to your hours of service screen. You're driving all day. You're done. You come back to the terminal. You're done for the day. You have one, a uh, couple, a uh, couple more steps that you need to do. So you've unloaded your truck, you've parked it. You want to go back to your dashboard. We need to do another DVIR. There are two po there are two in two inspections that are required by the DOT: a pre-trip inspection and a post-trip inspection. So what you want to do, and you have to do it in the on-duty status. So hit your DVIR. We want to certify our previous inspection. Only check a box if something's wrong. We want to hit post trip and no defects and certify your inspection and you're done. You've done your post trip inspection. Go back to your dashboard, go to your hours of service and put yourself off duty. Now, the most important thing is here is, is you're not done. You've only put yourself off duty, but as you can see, you're still logged into the system. Your name's still up there. That means if you were just to get out, if you were to leave the ELD in the truck right now and get out, if someone came in behind you and got it in the truck and started moving it, it would take you from off duty back to on duty. And we don't want that because when you come back into work tomorrow and go to log in, your hours are going to be all messed up. So when you go off duty, what you want to do is you want to go up, you want to tap your name, and you want to log out. You want to log completely out of the system. So hit log out. No trailer attached. Save and continue. 
Now, this last screen, before you completely log out, these should be the hours that you generated this day. This is all your on-duty, off-duty, all your driving. What you want to do is you want to hit verify all days. You need to verify your log every day at the end of the day because if you didn't get if you didn't verify your logs and you got pulled over, they're actually not considered legal logs until you actually verify them. So verify all days, hit agree. And it's logging you out. It's actually going through and verifying all your logs. That is the screen you should be on at the end of the day. That's where you should be at. This tells me, this tells you that you're not logged into the system. So if someone got in the truck right now, if you left this ELD in the truck, if someone got in, got in here and started driving, it wouldn't assign those hours to, to your name um, because you're completely logged out of the system. So that's why it's important to not only log off duty, but log out of the entire system. So one other thing I want to show you is I want to log back in real quick and it's really important. So we got our username. Let me find my truck. And what I want to show you is what happens if you get pulled over and have a DOT inspection completed because there are certain requirements for equipment that operates an ELD. There are certain things that we have to have and there are certain things that you may have to do as a driver if you're asked to by the DOT officer. So I'm just going to skip all this. So here we are, we're on our main screen. So you've gotten pulled over by the DOT officer, okay? Two things could happen. He may ask you for what's called cab cards. When we have an ELD system in our truck, we're required by DOT to have cab cards in our, in our truck. And what they are is they are inst instruction sheets, if you will, that tells the officer how to operate this ELD system. Well, we don't have paper cab cards. What, what Geotab did is they put the, the cab cards in the system itself. So if the officer comes up and says, I want to see your cab cards, all you hit is ELD info. And right here is the rule that states that we can have those cab cards in electronic format. And you can just hand this to the officer. Right there is the data transfer guide, the ELD manual. All he has to do is open up the document and he can see the instructions. The second thing is the officer may go, you know what, I don't want to look at your ELD, but I want you to send me your logs. You know, I want you to send me the last seven days of your logs. So what you're going to do is you're going to go down here, hit the inspection button. And you hit no pin. And it says enter officer code or comments. What you're going to do is the officer should give you a code that you're going to put in here. And then you'll hit email. And then what will happen is it will email your current logs to the officer so he can go back to his truck turn on his computer and he can go back there and inspect your inspect your logs so if you ever get pulled over that's what you want to do so i hope this tutorial was kind of useful for you guys um, if you have any questions please feel free to give me a call or give me a text um, it's not an option anymore uh, whether or not we log into the system you've got to log in it's a requirement and we just gotta we just gotta start practicing the the utilization of these. Now, as I said earlier, if you get in your truck and you have a tablet and it's broken or there is no tablets available, you can actually go to your go to your store. If you have an iPhone, is it the Apple Store? Or if you have a Droid, it's the the Microsoft Store, I guess. You can download the GeoTab Drive app. All you got to do is look for that symbol right there. You can download that app on your phone and the same functionality that you've seen on this tablet, you'll have on your phone. So that way you don't have to worry about carrying around a tablet, uh, whether or not it's charged or not. You can just use your phone. It's your choice. But if you're out on the road and something happens to your tablet, you know, having that app on your phone 
will kind of help you out a lot. Um, so if you guys have any questions, like I said, please feel free to give me a call or text me. I'm going to start monitoring, you know, our unassigned driving, who's logging in, uh, who's logging in correctly. And if I see that you may be having some issues, I'll, I'll be contacting you directly so that, um, you know, I, I can assist you, you know, making this more of a smoother operation. Thanks guys and drive safe.